shag! Where's my hockey stick? Right. Where's my hockey stick? Oh. Run, Mr. Colonel! Run! Excuse me, I can't see my name. I'm new. You don't speak to us. You're a scum, aren't you? I don't know. Of course he's a scum. You're blocking my view, scum. Markland Warmer Lavatory seat for me. I'll be ready in three minutes. And who are you? Please, sir. I'm Jude. Are you indeed? Dunning! This is Jude. Your Jude's bump, Jude. Take him to the sweat room. And Jude. You don't call me sir. Run! Run in the corridor! Place. Books and magazines here. Food in the locker. Peanuts over here. Okay? Silence in the sweat room! I would like to remind the sweat room that no tinned or potted foods are allowed, except tinned fruit and baked beans without meat. <laughs> Shut up! Duty scumming list now up. Junior table and exercise list up in five minutes. Get on with it. You two, get upstairs and behave yourselves. And you, Phillips, stop tarting. I'm not tarting. You need a haircut. Right, get a move on. You've got 30 minutes to get up and get your trunks up into the loft. Oh, God. This guy forks back again. Hello, Michael. Hello, Mick. We've got 29 minutes left. Oh, can it, bog face? This step into monotonous already. Being lippy, nightly. Tidy this is. Disgusting mess. The hell's that? Hey, Peanuts has come back with a bloody ray gun. It's a bloody ray gun. God, Stephens, you're so ignorant. Anyone can see it's a shag spot burner. Clear your face up in a couple of seconds, Nick. Actually, it's a six inch standard reflecting telescope. Well, get it out of here. Nightly, stop preening yourself in that mirror. Preen, preen, preen and cried. Travis, 
You're in the house. Take that crap off. God, you're ugly. You look evil. Yeah. My face is a never-failing source of wonder to me. What did you grow it for? To hide my sins. Right in the middle. You know what I did this summer? Built a hut in the woods. Lived there for three weeks. By myself. Till I ran out of food. <laughs> it was an experiment in asceticism. Penetrating the inner core of my being. You do anything good? I... Uh, met this fantastic bird in the East End. Went round all the pubs. Never been to those pubs. You should see those old loves dancing, showing their knickers. Take them off near the end. <laughs> Such a weird religion. Only kiss on Thursdays. <laughs> Took me home to meet mum and dad. Well, that finished it. Practically married us off, they did, over the Sunday joint. When do we live? That's what I want to know. Holy bum, come with us. Come on, we're gonna have our tiny parts inspected. <laughs> yeah, he's not wearing a vest already, is he? Pass the message down to Biles. Biles, why are you a freak? Biles, why are you a freak? Biles, why are you a freak? Shag off, you creeps. Now listen, you've got to know all the seniors' names. Ask me who someone is. Running, damn you! Stop talking! This term, I've just one thing to say to you. One rule. Follow it, and you won't go wrong. And it is this. Work, play, but don't mix the two. Perhaps some of you new boys are 
a little bewildered by the rapid succession of events which has overtaken you since your arrival, but you'll soon find your way about. Just remember that life here is a matter of give and take. We are your new family, and you must expect the rough and tumble that goes with any family life. We're all here to help each other. You will find here in College House a discipline not only to help others, but also to help yourselves. Help the house, and you will be helped by the house. Now I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our new undermaster, Mr. Thomas. I'm sure you'll all help him to find his feet. Last summer, this house got itself a reputation for being disgustingly slack. This term, things are going to be different. If there's any repetition of that deplorable lack of spirit, I shall come crashing down on offenders. We don't intend to carry passengers. I'd like to remind the house that it's winter term and that lock-up is at 5 p.m. Anyone leaving the house after that time must have a leave signed by a whip. The town, of course, is out of bounds. Line up in the usual way for medical inspection. Line up here! Alphabetical order! Stop talking! Be quiet! Health hazard of Ringworm? No. Ringworm. Eye disease? No. Eye disease? No. Confirmation class? No. Confirmation class? Next. Right. Next. Next. Confirmation class? No. Ringworm? No. Eye disease? No. Eye disease? No. Confirmation class? No. No. Confirmation class. Wake up, class. you. Next. So that's a good. Ringworm. No. Eye disease. Ringworm. BD. No. Eye disease. No. BD. No. Confirmation Ringworm. class. Ringworm. Right. No. Next. Next. Eye disease. It does it. Does it. Does it. Does it. It's a disease. <laughs> Christ! I'm infected! I've got hepatitis! My legs are spinning! I'm infected! Come on! Get out of it! Get up! Get up. Come on, move it! Come on, Keating, get out of it! Fetzer hasn't got elephantiasis, he's just a fat Jew. Watch it, Spotty. You're not a whip yet. Any more lip from you two, you'll be down for a cold shower. quiet up here. You can see the chapel spire when the leaves fall. Have you a shoe? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do come down and see us if you're at all lonely. Thank you so much, Miss Lisa. this? My diary. Well, keep it downstairs in the sweat room. All right. Good standard, Machin. Keep it up. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Come on, Chad. 
Travis, stop showing off. Good evening. Your hair is still long. Get it cut. Otherwise, very good, Stebbins. Lights out in 30 seconds. Good night. No talking. Well. Jolly, jolly good, Stephens. Jolly, jolly good, Stephens. Jolly, jolly oh, good. Oh, jolly, jolly good, Stephens. Jolly, jolly good. You three had better watch it. Don't push us, Stephens. The day's coming. What day? One night we're going to massacre you, Stephens. I'll do you for free. Townside windows and skylights open tonight. Stephens, whatever you're doing now, don't. Wired. Peanuts. Peanuts. Is it true you become a Buddhist? What? Christ. Don't you know Buddhists believe in being immoral? They worship sex. You mean Hindus? Hindus worship sex. Shut up. Go to sleep. Paradise is for the blessed, not for the sex obsessed. Thank you, Finchley. I want to see your whips in my study after break. Right, sir. Oh, how was India? Enjoy it? Jolly good. Bridget! Bridget, I shall be taking the modern sixth of business management this term. I hope you don't mind. Yes. Yes, of course. Headmaster. Headmaster. Yeah, uh, well, Kemp. I've made it late school Thursdays, okay? Yes, Kemp, sorry. Uh, Headmaster, may the Dramatic Society use your study for their Monday readings? 
Ah, well, I'll have to come back to you on that one, Captain. Padre, that was a super voluntary you gave us this morning. What was it? 18th century? Baxter Huda headmaster. Really? Well, it was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you've heard what happened to the orchestra this term. No girls from Springfield, complete band. Why? Oh, their breasts were getting too big. Temptations of the devil. How will we survive? Excuse me. Do you mind not putting your shag spots in here? <laughs> I think it best if we ignore each other this term. How the hell can we be you spewing pass all over the room? You drips. <laughs> Shut up, Travis. Night and day to be a pilgrim. Your holiday esses. Graves. Charming, Keating, good, making an effort at last. Denson, bad. Cox, Stephen, distribute. I'm afraid, Michael Travis, I lost your essay somewhere in the Mont Blanc tunnel, but I'm sure it was good. Right. Europe in the 19th century and the growth of nationalism. In studying the 19th century, one thing will be clear, that the growth of technology, telegraph, cheap newspapers, railways, transport, is matched by a failure of imagination, Denson, a fatal inability to understand the meaning and consequences of all these levers, wires, and railways. Climaxing in 1914, when the German Kaiser is told by his generals that he cannot stop the war he has started because it would spoil the railway timetables upon which victory depended. Or perhaps you fashionably and happily believe that it's all a simple matter of evil dictators rather than whole populations of evil people like ourselves? Do you disagree? Don't you find this view of history facile? No? Do you have a view? Well, if you insist on staring at me like a row of Christmas puddings, you can at least write. And perhaps you'll allow me to teach you, Travis, to make drudgery divine. It has been said of George III that he was a mollusk who never found his rock. Said by whom? Uh, Travis? Plum. J.H. Plum? Possibly. Uh, what were the failures of the British Constitution and the political parties that prevented the Mollusk King from finding his rock? A 20-minute essay, uh, without notes. What's a mollusk, for God's sake? Two triangles are congruent when one fits exactly over the other. The sides of the one equal the sides of the other. The angles of the one equal the angles of the other. Understand running? Yes, Good. Sine A equals BC over AB equals the perpendicular over the hypotenuse. Right, Jude? Yes, sir. College is a symbol of many things. Scholarship, integrity in public office, high standards in the television and entertainment world. Huge sacrifice in Britain's war. A 
of course, some of our customs are silly. You could say we were middle class. But a large part of the population is in the process of becoming middle class. And many of the middle class's moral values are values that the country cannot do without. And we must not expect to be thanked. Education in Britain is a nubile Cinderella, sparsely clad and much interfered with. <laughs> Britain today is a powerhouse of ideas, experiment, imagination. On everything from pop music to pig breeding, from atom power stations to miniskirts, and that's the challenge we've got to meet. There are boys in college in whom the muscles of creativeness are flexing, the pinions of imagination twitching. That's what makes my job worth doing. That's what makes college an exciting place. John Thomas. Tom Thomas. The headmaster. Flossie, the chaplain. Mm. Chippy Wood. No, it isn't um, Chippy Wood. It's Chippy Wood. When Roundtree tests you, you've got to be word perfect. Any umming and erring and you're done for. Now the town and no mistakes. Town girls. Town tarts. Grammar school. Smudges. All others. Bloody oiks. Oiks. Listen. You do realize it's not just a matter of knowing the answers, it's how you say it. One word wrong and you fail the whole test. And we get beaten. And you have to take the test all over again. Right. Raising boaters. Boaters must be raised to masters, wives, and friends of college. No! Masters, their wives, and the friends of college! Masters, their wives, and the friends of college. I'm sorry, Brunny. Bios. 
Excuse me, please. You're standing on my clothes. Stand up. Fortissimo, all together. One, two, three. <laughs> Keep having them, sir. These thoughts. What kind of thoughts? Dirty thoughts. We all have temptations to withstand. It's too strong for me, sir. Fight the good fight, Stephen. Closer. Thank you, Phillips. What are these? Muffins. I thought I specifically ordered crumpets. I couldn't get any. I thought these would do. Not up to you to think. Sorry, Roundtree. Oh, go away. Lazy sod. He gets a little lovelier each day. A lazy little bugger. I'll swap you. Oh, muffins. I like muffins. You and your wholesome Bobby Phillips, you're driving us all mad with jealousy. Do you know what Partridge in Hagehouse said to me? He said, why don't you send Bobby Phillips on a scum call to us one night? And we'll send you our tailor. Which one's tailor? You know, that little blonde. Oh, don't be disgusting. What's the matter, Denson? Aren't you keen? Oh, Denson's not like the rest of us. He's got standards. <laughs> Purity, Denson. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a matter of setting an example. If we can't set an example, who can? That's why we're given our privileges. Admirable sentiments. Anyway, this homosexual flirtatiousness, so adolescent. <laughs> Let's just see. Phillips! Oh, for God's sake, Roundtree. <laughs> Come on, Machin. We're Get waiting. Right. Bars is ready. Here. Both sides done. OK. OK, three. Mm, lovely. Here, what's mine? Big one in the middle. Hey. Ah. Phillips. Mm. Phillips, you want it. Roundtree. <laughs> Come in. Well. We're coming for Denson from now on. All right with you, Richard? Very well, you may go. Say thank you. Yeah, 
Aries. That's Mick. No matter how strong the urge, resist any temptation to go into battle this month. Otherwise, you run the risk of not only being on the wrong side, but possibly in the wrong war. <laughs> so now you know. The whole world will end very soon. Black, brittle bodies peeling into ash. I'm going bald. Must be something they put in the soup. I'll look senile before I even leave this dump. <laughs> My husband seems to feel it's all right to make love anywhere in the house. I cannot agree. Surely the bedroom is the right and only place for this very private happening. <laughs> you know, I've got bad breath. There's no such thing as a wrong war. Violence and revolution are the only pure acts. Do you know, in Calcutta, somebody dies of starvation every eight minutes? Eight minutes is a long time. Every morning I wake up dreaming I've got bad breath. My whole body's rotting. War is the last possible creative act. Isn't she beautiful? Hello, sweetheart. If there's only one thing you can do with a girl like this, walk naked into the sea together as the sun sets. Make love once. Then die. Fantastic. What makes me nervous about girls is you never know what they're thinking. Well, I don't think they do think. Hey! Quick! You've been drinking alcohol. No, we haven't. Where's the bottle? What bottle? Breathe. <sighs> Stand up when it whips in your study. <clears throat> Get your hands out of your pockets. Your hair's too long, all of you. You'll have a two-minute cold shower tomorrow morning. What in hell are those? They're my teeth. They're my good luck. There's still blood on them. They're a breeding ground for bacteria. I'm confiscating them. You're a degenerate, Travis. Get under. Get in. Go on, in the 
middle. Back a bit. Forward a bit. My time's up, you bastard. Say that till I get back. Deuteronomy, chapter 4, the first verse. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth unto you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me. <coughs> keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this nation is a wise and understanding people. Here ended the lesson. Right through both files. Feet together. Right. Good, good. It's a through boat, mate, Jim. Right. Come on, keep your head up. Head up. Come on, more effort. More effort, Philip. Come on. You need more push up. Good. Jude, come on. Come on, Jude. Jude, come on. All right. Right, all of you on your toes, get your sweaters. Get your sweaters.
Water, Mrs. Kemp. Lovely day, Mrs. Kemp. Salt, Mrs. Kemp. Spring greens, Mrs. Kemp. Dead man's leg today, Mrs. Kemp. Do you need this, Mrs. Kemp? College matches has degenerated completely. This will cease. The house will attend the match this afternoon and cheer loudly.
Yes. Two copies, please. Black or white? White. Black. stand in front of the mirror and my eyes get bigger and bigger. And I'm like a tiger. I love tigers. I like Johnny. Scissors. Stone. Paper. Scissors. Stone. Paper.
Anything wrong? No, it's all right, sir. Just duty rounds. You won't be long, will you, sir? Sorry, Denson. I didn't know it was so late. Good night, sir. Good night, Denson. You know, if I pass all the tests, I'm definitely going to California. I'm going to be a criminal lawyer. Of course, it all takes about 20 years. You'll all be dead by then. Well, I believe in having a goal. That way you succeed. Actually, that's your trouble. You've no ambition. No, I know. Is your mum coming from Founders Day? Yes. She's bringing her new husband, my new dad. What's he like? Actually, I don't think they're married. I don't care. I don't mind at all about that sort of thing. I shouldn't mind, should I? No. Oh, hell, I don't know. Quick, out the back. Can you explain yourself? What are you up to? Nothing. Who was with you? No one. What's the most horrible way to die? Getting a moth caught in your eardrum. You can hear it as it eats into your brain. Being flayed alive. That's what the Crusaders did to their enemies. Used to send the neatly folded skins back to their victims' wives. Cancer's worse. My mother took six months. The night's dead. You can hardly breathe outside. The thing I'd really hate is to have a nail bang through the back of my neck. Slowly. <laughs> I don't see what difference the speed makes. <laughs> the speed of the name. <laughs> Says there's always a lunatic fringe. There's a certain hard core in the studies. Oh dear. Yes. I'll have to deal firmly with it in certain instances. It may be necessary to make a few examples. The headmaster doesn't like too much thrashing. He wouldn't like college to get a reputation for decadence. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Of course, of course. And the juniors? How are the juniors? On the whole, dull. Oh, dear. Of course, it's just a matter of proportion. Unruly elements threaten the stability of the house. Best to nip them in the bud. Yes. Well, you, you must do what you think best. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, sir.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Quiet! As soon as you've finished, juniors to the sweat room and seniors to their studies. And wait in silence. Carry on. Fisher, that's your second bun. I saw you put it back. Good evening. I imagine you know why you're here. No? For being a nuisance. A general nuisance in the house. What do you mean, being a nuisance? What have we done? Done? It's your general attitude. You know exactly what I mean. Attitude? And we've decided to beat you for it. Stand up properly when the head of house addresses you. There's something indecent about you, Travis. The way you slouch about. You think we don't notice you with your hands in your pockets. The way you just sit there looking at everyone. You three have become a danger to the morale of the whole house. You can take that cheap little grin off your mouth. I serve the nation. You haven't the slightest idea what it means, have you? To you, it's just one bloody joke. You mean that bit of wool on your tit? You're in the sixth form now. You should be prepared to set an example of responsibility. You're a nuisance. And as such, you must be punished. Well, have you anything to say? Any of you? Yes, I have. The thing I hate about you, Roundtree, is the way you give Coca-Cola to your scum and your best teddy bear to Oxfam. And expect us to lick your frigid fingers for the rest of your frigid life. Go down to the gym. Wait outside.
Go to the bar. Sit down. Get up. Thank you, Humphrey. Thank you. Action Engius, Kai Gusteon Hospitus Skolakas. Thank you, Fortin Brass. Translate, please. And do you not remember, I said, that we also said that we must conduct the children to war on horseback, to, to be spectators, and wherever it may be safe, bring them to the front and give them a taste of blood. 
as we do with uh, two school cars, uh, as we do with horses. A creditable guess, but no. Anyone else? A young she goat. Look at that, Ramsey. School axe, school across. A young dog, a whelp, puppy. For the first time in 13 years, College House has won the Bigley Memorial Marathon Chalice. <laughs> this house has seen great days. It's going to see them again. We're back on the right track at last. But I don't want you to think you can relax. It's up to everyone to pull together. I want to see each one of you going all out. I know you've got it in you. So let's see College House back on top. All right? Right. House thump. College House! College House! College House! College We're on our own now. What are we going to do? Trust me? Of course. When are we going to do it? When I say. Death to the oppressor. The resistance. Liberty. One man can change the world with a bullet in the right place. Real bullets. Charlie. 
choose a dwelling and forsake a Cyprian Space, you see, Michael, is all expanding at the speed of light. It's a mathematical certainty that somewhere, among all those millions of stars, there's another planet where they speak English. Have a look. The Son of God goes forth to war, a kingly crown to gain. We are all corrupt. We are all sinful. We are all meet to be punished. If a soldier doesn't do his duty, he expects to be punished. There are failures great and small, and there are punishments great and small. But there is one failure, one crime, one betrayal that can never be forgiven. And that betrayal is called desertion. The deserter in the face of the enemy must expect to be shot. Jesus Christ is our commanding officer. And if we desert him, we can expect no mercy. And we are all deserters.
listen to these sections. Come on, listen. Edge Junction, four o'clock, bushy top tree. We will attack and destroy that tree. Right, bring gun left. Go on, move. Doing. It's awful. You forgot to yell. The yell of hate. Ah! It's the yell that counts. Everybody back. Have the double. Ready? Dog! All right, Denson, bring him in over here. Hurry up. <laughs> Don't draw on that march properly. Up. Up. That's right, pick up the That's a double. Section over here. This is an order. Put your rifles down. Get over to the TQ. Go on here. Go on. Move. Hey, Adrian. Right, boys. Stop. You keep going. rifles at once. Hand over those rifles instantly. Come on, hand them over. Take this seriously. Very seriously indeed. The Reverend Woods might have been quite badly hurt. 
Do you realize that? Now, I want you to apologize to him. Is that clear? You mustn't think that I don't understand. It's a natural characteristic of adolescents to want to proclaim individuality. There's nothing unhealthy about that. It's a quite blameless form of existentialism. This, for instance, is what lies at the heart of the great hair problem. I think you boys know that I keep an open mind on most things. And of one thing I am certain, short hair is no indication of merit. So often I've noticed that it's the hair rebels who step into the breach when there's a crisis. Whether it be a fire in the house, or to sacrifice a week's holiday in order to give a party of slum children seven days in the country. But of course there are limits. Scruffiness of any kind is deplorable. I think you'd go that far with me. Now, the fees here are at present 643 pounds per annum, which works out at about 15 guineas a week. This is no mean sum. It is the salary, for instance, of the average trainee supermarket manager. But on the other hand, it's no more than the cost of keeping a juvenile delinquent in Boston. However, this is merely to look at the matter in terms of hard cash, which is not the only consideration. There is, above all, the question of service. Those who are given most also have most to give. Now, you boys are intelligent. You're too intelligent to be rebels. That's too easy. And it would be easy to punish you in the normal way. But I'm going to give you a privilege. Work. Real work. And I want you to think of this not as a punishment, but as an opportunity to give, to serve.
Your Royal Highness, my Lord Bishop, General Denison, my lords, ladies, and gentlemen, today is a day for the future and also a day for the past. Any institution which has half a thousand years, one quarter of the Christian era stretching behind it, is bound to have a sense of the past. <laughs> but in point of fact, there can be few places where tradition is examined with such a critical eye as this college. A constant self-appraisal is going on. And indeed, changes are happening so fast <coughs> that even as I speak, these words are out of date. <laughs> But first, I want to introduce General Denson, who, of course, needs no introduction either as a national hero or as an old boy. General Denson. Thank you, Edmund. Your Royal Highness, my Lord Bishop, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, men of college. Now, you chaps are probably thinking there's nothing but an old soldier like me can teach you. Well, you may be right. All the same, I'm going to have a shot at it. First thing, you're lucky. Yes, a lot of men would give their eye teeth to be sitting where you're sitting now. You are privileged. Now, for heaven's sake, don't get me wrong. There is nothing the matter with privilege, as long as we're ready to pay for it. It's a very sad thing, but today it is fashionable to belittle tradition. The old orders that made our nation a a living force, are for the most part scorned by modern psychiatrists, priests, pundits of all sorts. But what have they got to put in their place, hmm? Oh, politicians talk a lot about freedom. Well, freedom is the heritage of every Englishman who speaks with the tongue that Shakespeare spoke. But you know, we won't stay free unless we're ready to fight. And you won't be any good as fighters unless you know something about discipline, the habit of obedience, how to give orders, and how to take them. <coughs> Never mind the sneers of the cynics. Let us just be true to honor, duty, national pride. <coughs> we still need loyalty. We still need tradition. If we look around us at the world today, what do we see? We see bloodshed, confusion, decay. I know the world has changed a great deal in the past 50 years. But England, our England doesn't change so easily. And back here in college today, I feel, and it makes me jolly proud, that there is still a tradition here which has not changed, and by God, it isn't going to change. It's up to all of you chaps to give the world a lead. 
It is Britain's tradition that you have learned here, self-reliance, service, self-sacrifice. The tradition of college, and it's up to all of us to reassure the world by our unquestioning obedience that we still hope for. My God, we're on fire. Now, don't panic. Don't panic. Women first. Don't go for the window. Don't crash for the hour. Don't shout. Don't panic. Don't panic. Women are just panic. Oh, my God. Come on, stand up. Hand up, hand up for college. Each manly voice up raised. <laughs> Trust me! Trust me! 